Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. All right, so hello. Uh, always a danger to be in between uh, just before the lunch. So I'll try to be quick. So this is really, uh, the work was done with uh, Fivel Fogel, who is still a, a PhD student. Uh, we have this uh, MSR INRIA uh, Research Center, Joint Research Center in Paris. And th this is his uh, advisor. So the work was done pretty much last year. He paid a visit. Um, all right, so it's pretty much based on a paper. It's a NIPS paper. There's a web page with a code, uh, some examples, and things like this. Uh, as far as the problem goes, let me start with, uh, uh, you, I guess many of you might be very familiar with this. So what is given is the following. Suppose your goal is to rank a set of objects, items, and what is given to you as input is uh, basically information about pairwise comparisons. So C is going to be a comparison matrix. So having a 1 if I is ranked higher than J, observed to be ranked higher than J, Zero if, for example, there is a draw or that there is a missing comparison, and minus one if otherwise I is rank lower than J. So this is very standard. Now, this is the input, and then you want to order items in an order, natural order, uh, that in some way kind of uh, is aligned with what is given to you. So this problem has been studied, I don't know, at least to my knowledge, since 1920s or something like this, which is very interesting. I mean, there's a work. Uh, there's a Thurston paper, 1927 or third or something like that. There's a Zermelo, a German uh, scientist. And surprisingly, there's a lot of interest actually today. So because the problem is very natural and there's, there, there are many applications, you do want to rank items. Uh, so in terms of the related work, let me just glance through this very quickly. Some of you might not be entirely familiar. So Bradley Terry, or sometimes Bradley Terry Luce, would be a model based on a probabilistic model when you say each given item is associated with a parameter which represents kind of a skill or a value of that item and then you specify in a comparison between a pair given these two corresponding parameters of the, of the, of the given uh, items in a pair was the uh, outcome was the probability of one being ranked and higher higher than, than the other one so this is really a specific model of that kind it was studied by Bradley and Terry in 1950s, but it really comes from Zermelo's work in 1920s. Anyway, so, and then there's this piece uh, of a very recent work, actually, people from MIT studying pretty much the same model, but not looking into maximum likelihood estimate of these uh, parameters representing skills or uh, values of items, but looking into something else, which might be for various reasons. One reason is, if you look into a different scheme so as to estimate these parameters, you may say actually something about a, a problem. For example, you may specify how many uh, pairwise comparison is enough to observe so as to rank within some accuracy error or uh, in some precision. Uh, Thurston, on this, as I mentioned, there's a well-known example, true skill, something uh, developed actually in this lab. And then there are these other schemes. So somehow you may bucket these given two to be based on a probabilistic model when there are latent uh, parameters. And then these other ones are kind of, I don't know, common, some of them common sense schemes. For example, it's very natural to maybe associate it, each item with a point score representing uh, goodness of behavior. And for example, that could be just counting the number of wins against other items, if you like. So I don't know, in football leagues, typically you have kind of something similar to this, not exactly the same. And then there are a bunch of these other schemes, which is kind of page rank style, compute a principal eigenvector, which may be seen as a way kind of to account to wins, which are not direct wins. So it's not only counting I a given item won against a particular item, but also you look into multiple ops. So I guess many of you might be very familiar with this. So what our work is about is kind of look into a different way to do this, which is very simple idea, which goes as follows. So again, we are given this comparison matrix. And instead of looking into kind of scores, which is associated to item as, as a starting point, we are going to look at how different pairs 
compare in competitions with kind of other alternatives or items. So I and J, so, so let's see in the picture what this equation means. So it would mean the following, if I take, consider an I and J pair, and then you take a reference item K, you would say you score a, a plus one, uh, because they actually they both, this would mean they both won against K, for example. Likewise, if they both lost, you score a plus one, minus one, if they contradict, so meaning one won, the other one lost. And this is the way you will construct this, essentially, kind of similarity in performance. The high level idea is, let me just move, the high level idea is somehow to create a ranking such that items that are similar in comparison with other items come close or near in, in the output ranking. So this is the, the kind of uh, intuition. Now, Serial rank is a spectral algorithm. It, it's kind of very simple to describe, so I'll tell you what it is, and then I'll tell you why is it like, like this. So it, there's actually a very simple reason. It's not out of some very obscure, something obscure. So input is a, a matrix, comparison matrix. Then we compute this similarity matrix S, the way I described before. And then what it does is kind of computes scores, if you like. Previously, we have seen some methods to compute <laughs> scores associated with items. These scores are going to be corresponding to the elements of an eigenvector of a Laplacian matrix of the similarity matrix. And you compute this eigenvector, I'll tell you in a minute what Fiddler eigenvector is, and then you order in, say, in decreasing or, no, or, or incre increasing or decreasing order, you pick one which has the smaller number of upsets, if you like. So it's a way to choose one of the two. So it's a very simple, again, a spectral method, like page rank is, or uh, some other schemes, similar schemes. Uh, Fiddler eigenvector is nothing else but eigenvalues are going to be non-negative. There is an eigenvalue of value zero, and then you look at the smallest uh, eigenvalue. You call it a Fiddler eigenvalue, and the corresponding eigenvector is Fiddler eigenvector. So this is well known. Some of, some of you might be um, actually very familiar with this. So as to compute the Fiddler eigenvector, you're just solving this optimization problem with a, with a quadratic uh, objective function. Now, there are a few things, and I have to be mindful of the time. So, uh, so what, what is it? I mean, so basically what I said by now, I kind of told you, I hope you, you uh, kind of admitted that the scheme itself seems to be quite natural. Second, the algorithm is simple. I haven't said maybe why is it like that. And what kind of questions you want to study is to see whether actually this ranking actually makes sense. Is it efficient? Is it able to recover uh, say a true ranking, if you define what the true ranking is, and uh, say accurately exactly, or maybe within some approximation. So, a very kind of in terms of the framework, what is very convenient is to consider this notion of Robinson matrices. So, think of this as a matrix symmetric matrix, which has this property. So, there's certain monotonicity order. It's a class of matrices. We say it's a Robinson matrix if that holds. We say pre R, it will be a pre R, pre Robinson. If you can find, if you can permute rows and columns by a given permutation so that the resulting matrix becomes an R matrix. And then we say it's strict if the only two permutations that actually can do that are identity uh, or reverse. Right, so this is like just to, just to maybe say a few things. And then once we have defined that, what is interesting is that maybe the last statement which says if the matrix A happens to be strict Robinson, then the field eigenvector elements of the field eigenvector, they're strictly monotonic. So basically, you can order items. There is no confusion. Right, so why is this kind of strict Robinson property interesting is that if we start with uh, the following thing. So suppose the true ranking is going to be identity ranking. I can take, take any, but suppose I have items 1 to n, and really the order is meant to be 1, 2 to n. So the input comparison matrix is consistent with this. This is going to be true uh, ranking, assuming there are no corruptions and missing entries. We are going to deal with those later. Uh, so a given input matrix C, and then if you compute the similarity matrix, it's going to look like this, and this is a strict R matrix. So what this means, if we run spectral algorithm, the, the serial rank that I defined before, you are going to the, the order induced by the Fiddler eigenvector elements 
co correspond to the identity. So in a way, you can do exact recovery, uh, so you have a, a correctness of the algorithm in this case. Now, in reality, you're not going to find these matrices. This will be like a, a very simple. So basically, if we assume you have a, each given pair is compared, and it's like really there are no contradictions. In reality, there are going to be missing entries, a few, few pair, pair comparisons observed, and contradicting, you know, the transitivity may not necessarily hold. Right, so, but it's a good starting point to start with something that you may corrupt and then see when you add these corruptions or kind of noise to what extent the scheme is robust. So there are a few things you may kind of note. Okay, so let's maybe try to argue when the scheme is better maybe than the other ones. And we are going to compare with a point score, which means count the number of wins for each given item against the other ones. Five minutes, excellent. Uh, right, so this is basically telling you if you do isolate, it's like a very, uh, it's a perturbation, it's a naive perturbation. Assume only one pair you perturb, and it's, it's not like in a very neighboring item. So if you do this, you're going to induce a tie for the point score, while a similarity matrix is going to remain strict. Robinson, which means you can do exact recovery. So those are very, very kind of a tall examples of perturbations, but for those you can demonstrate uh, kind of a better robustness. You can extend these to M pair comparisons. You have the same claim, so you can do a little, little, bit, little bit of extra. And then if you assume that these um, corruptions, so corruption would mean like uh, an item is ranked higher than, item I is ranked higher than J, but then you flip it. Huh? This is the corruption. So if you do this for, say, order N, think of it this one, order N elements, then with the, say, constant probability, let me just maybe rephrase it like this, you are going to find the, exact, uh, the accurate ranking. So this is maybe the last theoretical result. So pretty much in the paper, the NIPS paper, we have kinds of these things and something that, some things that are omitted. This is more of a work in progress. It's something we want to establish. For some of these uh, schemes that I previously mentioned, people managed to say the following, which is interesting, I believe. For example, if I have n items, clearly if I have order n to the two observations, I should be able to uh, come up with a good ranking. So now what you want to do is to do something which is sublinear in n to the two. And people have found schemes for which, for example, n log n order, or sort of think of it nearly and linearly in the number of items, in the, in the number of, so the number of pairwise observations that are sufficient is basically, roughly speaking, order n. So this is kind of giving you a similar uh, uh, statement for serial rank. Uh, so pretty much it's like, think of this result as kind of being nearly proved. So uh, it's still not entirely. So it relies on kind of some perturbation of matrices, uh, uh, spectral analysis, and things like this. Uh, in terms of empirical evaluation, we looked at, and I have a, a very little, but anyway. So we looked into synthetic data sets. So think of this one. I start with this identity, like a silly matrix comparison matrix, which is kind of, there are no contradictions. Uh, so this is the, the one I introduced at the very beginning. And then you corrupt it. So meaning you flip some of the entries. Or maybe you annulate, put some uh, entries to 0, meaning like they are not observed. And you may do this uniformly. You may do it in some structured way. And then the second item is real world examples, looking to top quarter data and then uh, England football uh, Premier League. So. Overall conclusion is going to be, it, it does uh, comparably with other schemes. So what, what do we have on this plot? Maybe let's start with one just to explain it. And then serial rank is the one I described. This is the point score. This is the rank centrality, which is kind of think of it uh, Bradley Terry particular way to estimate parameters. And this is the maximum likelihood of Bradley Terry. So this is a, a correlation coefficient. The higher, the better. So you'll see pretty much all of these other schemes, they line up to this curve we do slightly better in here. So the higher, the better. But it is not always like this. There are certainly cases where actually we do worse. For example, in here, the red one. So point score is going to perform worse, but then Bradley Terry would be better. Uh, but overall, not too far off. It's not really kind of, it's not a crazy scheme to do, a crazy algorithm to do. Again, this, is, this one is to our favor, pretty much the same, but this is like a missing entries and with some corruptions and something like this. In terms of real world, i just maybe fast forward. So this will be top coder data. And here, actually, it, it does quite well. So this is looking into number of upsets. 
or kind of the uh, non-conforming uh, uh, orderings with respect to the uh, given input data for top K uh, 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 ranked items. So the serial rank is going to be a red one. And you see that some of the schemes, they actually are way worse. This will be the point score. There's a, quite a bit of a gap between the two. And then the red one actually is not too bad. I mean, sometimes it is beaten up by another one, but it's not very conclusive. There's no strict order uh, between the schemes. Uh, this is similar data, but for football, this is the Premier English Premier, Premier League 2013-14 uh, or something like this. And maybe this is the, or nearly the last slide, so I hope I'm within time limits. This is if you do, it was really 2013-14 football data, if you do all of these different ways. So this is the official like a three-point win scheme, which is commonly used in football, the, the standard way to do. This is the point score or row sum, rank centrality, relatory serial rank, and something else. Let me not go into it. So overall, I don't know, there is some agreement to the top as you would expect then at the end. I don't know, you'll see some noise overall in here. Kind of surprisingly, there is a, all of these schemes or uh, ranking methods, not all of them. This one actually is a way off. Uh, they kind of conform for the top ranked team, but for the second and third, for some reason actually in here we have Chelsea and Liverpool order in that given way while the original one was this. So I don't know, so one may look more closely into what happened, maybe the Chelsea overall was performing uh, similarly as Man Manchester City in comparison with other teams. That's kind of a very intuitive way maybe to explain it. Anyway, so in summary, it's kind of a, I think, I don't know, to my knowledge, is a new way, kind of principal way to do a ranking based on this kind of notion of similarity. There is a spectral algorithm for it. And what we aim to do is really kind of get some sense whether this algorithm makes sense at all and how robust it is to corruptions, uh, missing entries, and things like this. And I glanced through empirical results. And anyway, so I'll stop at this point. Questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a question about the evaluation. It seems to me there are two, essentially two different criteria. So for example, the top K performance that you have shown, um, that seems to me it's not a statistical problem, right? It's a pure optimization problem. It doesn't have to, it doesn't try to recover one true ranking that really is assumed to exist, but it just tries to match the existing triplets that you, uh, um, um, triplets that you observe as well as possible, right? So there's no statistical element. And then the statistical evaluation, it's sort of assuming a certain model, can you recover that under certain models of corruption? So have people worked on, have you looked into um, sort of other evaluation criteria, what is actually, uh, let's say in a user study, what is a plausible ranking, what is agreeing with this human assessment and so on, or is that not the question? This is really admitting kind of, I guess, like a loss function approach, so meaning you say Kendall uh, loss function or something like this, and then try to see what kind of a distance you have um, in terms of which one of those will be deemed kind of more natural in on a practical setting, I don't know. So the top K is more, for example, concretely speaking, top K is more kind of driven by common sense intuition. This is something you may care about. Well, then the candle tau correlation just comes because people, when typically you do a rank aggregation, you take a particular loss function and then you see how, it's, then it's in some sense it's an optimization problem. But I guess the question maybe is like, which one of these optimization problems are kind of unnatural ones? Because I guess most of them, they can be, after all, formulated as certain optimization. I hope that answers a little bit, at least. Yes? If I plan correctly, you'd be able to extend this to have pair comparisons that are weighted rather than just being binary. Is that right? Uh, yes, yes. In the paper, uh, I focus pretty much in here, like comparison matrix being minus one, one, zero valued. We also did something could be, for example, in an interval minus one to one, and then that could be according to Bradley Terry like model, for example. Have you experimented with um, ranking by kind of data? Not empirically, but we have some theoretical results on, uh, say, kind of correctness of recovery and things like this. Okay, any more questions? Otherwise, let's thank, thank Milan again. Thanks.